welcome once again to the Life of Excellence, a part of the New Life 313 ministry team. This is Jay Hurt, Senior Lead Minister. I am so excited to be with you today. I hope and pray that what you hear today will uh, encourage you and uh, uplift you and build you to a level of faith and victory like you've never had before. Now, anytime during this program, we encourage you, hallelujah, to be a part of this program, newlife313.life, connect with us, send us your prayer request, uh, connect with us at newlife313.life, uh, sign up for our e-letter to receive it every single week. But if you'd like to connect with us during this program by sending us an e-letter, uh, an email, then click on newlife313.life and write to us an email and we will take your prayer request during this program and we will begin to pray with you. We open pray no matter where you are today, whether you're listening live, whether you're listening on audio, radio, uh, through internet, media, uh, ministry, whichever way you're listening, that you are blessed today by what we're going to say. Man, it's a it's a great day to be a Christian. It's a great day to be alive. And you know, the Bible says that we were going to go through persecutions. Jesus said, I'll bless you with houses and lands and all great things, but there will be persecutions. And right now, the church is being persecuted. Right now, it seems like there's more darkness than there is light. But glory to God, this is the greatest time to be a child of God and a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, whoo, I'm feeling sorry for you right about now. You need to get some Christianity in your life. You need to rededicate your life so you can get through these things that are going on. But oh, glory to God. It's going to be a great time today. Once again, I want to thank you for being a part of this program today. The Life of Excellence is a part of the New Life 313 ministry team of media outreach. And you can go and be a part of everything New Life is by visiting our website, newlife313.life. That's newlife313.life. And connect with us. Click on that connect button and be a part of what God is doing through this team of believers, knowing for going out and rebuilding lives, restoring hope and renewing vision. Hallelujah. It's going to be a great day. We're going to get right into the lesson today, and I hope and pray that what we share with you today will be a blessing. If you have your Bible, your tablet, your, your phone, or and if you're somewhere where you can lift it up, just go ahead and lift it up, and let's make our statement of faith. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I will be what it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. I will have what it says I can have, and I will apply it to my life. We want to thank, before we get started, all of our hero partners. These monthly hero partners are supporting this ministry and listening all around the country and parts of the world. Thank you so much for being a part of New Life 313 Ministries and helping us, hallelujah, expand the life of excellence. Let's get right into the Word of God today. I'm going to talk to you today from the book of Joshua. It's a brand new sermon. I've never spoken anywhere until right here, right now. I started working on this message because of a message I heard from someone else, a very well-known minister, and they said something that just stirred my heart so much. I had to begin a message on this series called The Strongholds. And I want to talk to you today about the strongholds in and around a Christian's life and in and around your life personally. Let's go to Joshua, the sixth chapter. And this is what it says, if you have your, uh, I said say, this is what it says, excuse me. Uh, Joshua, the sixth chapter, if you have your Bible, get your Bible out. Now Jericho, the very first verse, was shut up because of the children of Israel. Now notice that Jericho was closed up because of the people of Israel, the children of Israel. And it says this, and none went out and none came in. And during this time, the Lord said to Joshua, see, now this is key right here where he says, see, see, I have given you Jericho into your hand. I have given its kings, the mighty men of valor, and you shall march around the city and all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once this you shall do six days. Now, let me pause right there and share something with you. First off, it says Jericho. Now, Jericho was closed up because of the children of Israel. No one could come in and no one could go out. Every exit and every entrance 
was blocked by the children of Israel. Jericho was a mighty fortress at that time. It was a stronghold, but God had used the children of Israel to shut it up, to close it up. Just to give you an example, when you study about uh, uh, Jericho, the mound which the tail around Jericho was surrounded by great earthen ramparts. It had ramparts all the way around it with embankments. It had a stone retaining, retaining wall at its base. The retaining wall, they estimated, was 12 to 15 feet high and some places 20 to 26 feet deep. It was said you could take a two chariots and ride across the, 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 the wall of Jericho. This is what the children of Israel were looking at. This is what they were facing. It was literally a stronghold. It was not only a walled city that was 10 to 15 feet high, then 20 to 26 feet deep, but then it had another portion of dirt in between it, and then another wall behind that that they estimate was about 46 feet in, uh, uh, tall. So it wasn't just a walled city. It was a mammoth city. It was a city that was a stronghold. Now, looking at it, God told them, I have given you the city. Now, can you imagine Joshua saying to the children of Israel, I want you to get out and I want you to go out tomorrow because tomorrow you're going to do something you've never done. In fact, Joshua said these words. He said, you have never been this way before, so consecrate yourself. You had never been this way before. See, prior to the events of Jericho, God had spoke through Moses and even Joshua himself numerous times and said, be strong and courageous or be strong and of good courage and encouraging him and telling him that there's going to be times, Joshua, you're going to face some discouragement. I need you to be strong and courageous. You know, I've often wondered about this because Joshua, according to the Bible, was the second in command to Moses. He was Moses' protege, but he was also a mighty warrior. He's the one that fought the battle, and, and when Moses would raise his hand, he would, he would go against the enemy, and Moses would put his hands down. The enemy would retaliate against him, and finally Aaron and Hur held up the hands of Moses, and they were able to win the battle that day. Joshua was a fearless warrior. In fact, he was waiting halfway up the mountain when Moses was getting the revelation from God, the Ten Commandments, and speaking with God. And, and he heard the same sound that Moses heard in the camp. And when Moses came down, Joshua said, there's a sound of war in the camp. And Moses said, no, Joshua, it's not a sound of the war. He knew that the people were making a golden calf. So here Joshua was a man that was ready to fight. He was a man prepared for battle. But yet God is saying, be strong and courageous. This is the reason I believe that God was speaking to him to be strong and courageous because of what he told the people. He said, consecrate yourself because you've not been this way before. They weren't in the wilderness anymore. They were not, hallelujah, fighting enemies in this little camp and that little camp and this little town and that little town and these large enemies coming together. No, 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 no. They were actually about to face one of the most fortified cities of that day. One of the oldest cities in all of the land one of the most corrupt and vile and morally decayed cities in all of that area. Now, isn't it something right when they crossed the Jericho to go into the promised land, the first thing they face is a stronghold. The first thing they face is a problem. The first thing they face is a situation. See, the word stronghold means this, a fortified place. Have you ever felt like God wanted you to do something? And you really believed it and you really knew it was going to happen and you really knew that God told you to do this. But when you began to do it, there was obstacles, <laughs> there were problems, there were situations and you didn't understand it. You didn't truly begin to experience in your mind what you were going to face. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're like, zippity doo da, zippity day. Oh my, oh my, what a wonderful day. And you're going across the Jericho. Everything's going to be great. And then all of a sudden you look up and you see this walled city. You see this city that is massive. And then your leader says, 
Hey, everybody, see that city? God has given you that city. <laughs> they had just come out of the wilderness for 40 years. They had just come out of a problem in their life. You know, I've talked to many Christians, and they've come out of one situation, and they're crossing over, and they just feel so excited. They feel so glad. They feel so powerful. And then they face an opposition, and their first reaction is, well, if God promised to bless me, if God promised to heal me, if God promised to give me victory, why am I facing this obstacle? Beloved, there are going to be challenges that are set before you, strongholds, the fortified places, because the enemy of your progress, the enemy of your anointing, the enemy of your promise doesn't want you to get it. So what does he want you to do? He wants you to go, oh, I can't do that. That's way too much. That place is sealed up way too tight, but not Joshua, because God had already told him, be strong and courageous. Not only did he tell Joshua that, but Joshua told the people, I want you to be of good courage. He said, I want you to be of good courage because you've not been this way before, and we're going to go, and we're going to take this city. How do I know, Joshua? Because God said, see? I'm giving you Jericho. But notice what he said. He said, I've given you Jericho into your hand. Now, this was before they ever marched one time. He said, I've given you the king into your hand. And I gave you the mighty men of valor into your hand. God had already prepared Joshua by telling him, be strong and courageous. Whether you know it or not, if you listen deep down in your spirit, God is encouraging you to be strong and courageous. He's encouraging you to hold steadfast. He knew that once they saw these walls, now imagine the outer wall is, is 10 to 15 feet high, 20 to 26 feet deep, and behind that is another wall that is, is, is at its base is roughly about 46 feet tall. So it not only had one tier, but it had two tiers as it went up as a rampart, that is, it went up as a slant. And, and not only are they seeing the outer wall, but they can see behind it the inner wall and the, the, the mound between the two walls. And I can imagine all of a sudden in their mind, hallelujah, they're like, okay, Joshua, you said, look over there, God has given us the city, but have you seen what it looks like? See, that's why the word of God tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. If we continue to live our life walking by sight, we will never accomplish a Jericho victory. If we continue walking by sight, we will never accomplish, hey, hallelujah, a Daniel, a, day, a, a lion's den victory or a fiery furnace victory because we're looking more at the fire and more at the lions and more at the city, hallelujah, than the victory of God. You know, many years ago, I was... Uh, uh, helping in a tent revival. I grew up in tent revivals and, 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 and we traveled all over. And, and so I grew up in the, uh, watching these tents, as we used to say, because we'd spend the night there, a lot of us teenage guys, and make sure nothing was stolen. And one day I was out on the parking lot just going, doing my rounds, as they said, checking the parking lot, checking to make sure nobody was bothering the cars, nobody was doing that. And there was this big guy leaning on this car. And he startled me when I turned around. And I'm going to have to admit, I wasn't a very strong Christian at that time. But I looked around and I said, can I help you, sir? And he said, no, in a very rough voice underneath this cowboy hat. I said, well, uh, I said, you're welcome to go in. And he goes, and who are you? I said, well, I'm one of the guys that helps take care of the tent. I just come around and looking at the cars and check it on the car. He goes, you think I'm about to do something? And I said, no, sir, I didn't. I said, but I was just telling you, you're welcome to go in there. And he looked at me and he stood up. And when he stood up, he was a lot bigger than he was when he was leaning against that car. And I'm only about 5'9". And I just looked up to this guy who was standing above me. And he said, why are you bothering me? I said, I'm not bothering you. I'm just encouraging you to go in there. And he looked at me and he said, they don't want me in there. I said, oh, sir, they want everybody in there. We want everybody. He said, even someone who's been convicted of killing somebody. And I'll just admit, admit he said that. My knees kind of shook and my, my eyes kind of, you know, watered up. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, I just got out of prison for manslaughter. He said, and you're going to say they're going to let me in there? And I said, sir, they'll let anybody in there. 
And I said, God doesn't care where you come from. All he cares is where you're going. And I was just a young Christian at that time. I wasn't really fully dedicated, but my grandmother, my aunt, uncle, and my auntie, were they were both ministers. So I knew the word. I knew of the word. I knew some of it. And I knew that Jesus said, come unto me all who are labored and heavy laden. And I said, sir, it don't matter to them what you've done. God, God can forgive you. And his shoulders just slumped. He wasn't in that prison fighting mode anymore. And he goes, huh, all right, well, thank you. I said, well, you're welcome. Have a good night. And, and I was almost relieved. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know. And, and, and I just slowly stood there and backed away from that car. And he walked towards the tent. And, and, and he leaned up against the tent post through the what we used to call the flaps of the tent. He was, it was a doorway that we opened from the flaps. And he was looking in. And I just turned around and started going the other way to check on the cars. And when I looked back, he was gone. I never knew if he went in. I didn't see him with his cowboy hat on or I didn't see him sitting in there. And But beloved of God, I just knew that that man had a stronghold in his life. I knew it deep down in my spirit. I knew that he needed someone to tell him, you can go on in. You can be forgiven. Your sins can be washed away. His stronghold was his past in the prison time. My stronghold was the fear of telling someone you can do that because I was still new in Christ. But I broke through my stronghold and I wanted to help him break through his stronghold. That's what Joshua was doing. He was telling the children of Israel, Jericho is already yours. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it. It may not seem like it. And for the next six days, hallelujah, you're not going to even talk about it. You're just going to go ahead and you're going to walk around it. Now, that was another thing that probably blew their mind. Look what the Lord said. He said, I'm going to give everything to you, all the men of war. And God never said, so get your uh, swords out and your spears ready and get the, the shields and, uh, and armor on. No, look what he said. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to walk around the city once for six straight days. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's like me telling you, well, you're going to kill that giant out there. It doesn't matter. Just get it ready. I want you to walk around him for six times and he's going to get killed because you're going to have a victory. You'd be telling me, brother, you're crazy. You better give me a sling and a stone like David. You better tell me how to use a weapon. No, but see, God was trying to show Joshua and the people. Your stronghold is not something that can be defeated, hallelujah, with natural warfare weapons. It has to be defeated in your faith first. It has to be defeated in your spirit first. So what did they do? The next day they lined up and Joshua began to lead that, 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 that group of people around the walls. I can imagine, hallelujah, as one minister said, the first few hours, the people were making fun of them from on top of the wall. They were probably cursing them and throwing things at them. But Joshua had told the people, don't say a word. Don't let your mouth get in front of your blessing. Oh, hallelujah. That's a word for somebody today. Don't let your mouth get in front of your breakthrough. Don't let your mouth get in front of your blessing. Don't let your mouth get in front, hallelujah, of your, 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 your victory and your faith. So many times you say, preacher, why are you talking about getting my mouth out in front of my, my, my faith? So many times you let your words snare you and pull your faith back and pull your victory back and pull your breakthrough back. You get right on the verge of it, but then you pull it back because you're, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen. What are we doing? Can you imagine those people when they got back at their tent at night? And they got back in there and some of them got around and said, man, I sure hope Joshua knows what he's doing. I know he told us to be strong and courageous, but it seems awful silly for us just to be walking out there. And now I want you to imagine if it was during the time where the Bible says the banks of Jordan were overflowing. I mean, not only was it just God telling them to go across the Jordan on a normal time, but the banks were overflowing. See, Many times God will challenge, in a, challenge us to do something when the obstacles seem the biggest in our life. Not only were they facing a city that was shut up, that was fortified, but the banks of Jericho had overflowed. And can you imagine, here they are during the harvest season. It's probably hot out there, and they start walking. That first day they're walking and the people in Jericho have said, oh, come down here. Look, this is that mighty army of Israel that we've been hearing about on the other side of Jordan. 
These are, these are the people that we were afraid of. That's what Rahab had told them. We know what you've done and fear has gripped us. And we know what your God is doing through you. And I can imagine the leaders and the generals was like, oh yeah, come on up closer to this wall. We'll, we'll show you just how powerful we are. They were walking around that wall, not saying a word. I can imagine when they got back to their tents at night, as I, I was saying, it was like, I sure hope Joshua is right. I wonder if some of the, the captains of the guards got in the tent and said, man, I'll tell you what, buddy, you need to pray for me. You need to encourage me because we've never fought like this before. Uh, and now tomorrow, Joshua wants us to get up and be quiet. He said, did you hear what they called us? Did you hear what they said from those walls of Jericho? Did you hear? But see, that's what a stronghold does. It makes you feel like that there is no way in no way under, no way over, no way around. All you're doing is walking in circles trying to figure out how to break through it. But God is a God that says, I've given you the city. God said, not only have I given you the city, but I gave you the king. I gave you the mighty men. I've given you all the people. I've given you everything in that city, but I need you to do something for me. I need you to be patient. I need you to walk around this wall. I don't want you to say a word. I don't want you to complain. I don't want you to gripe. I don't want you to murmur. Don't look at the people and fight back with words. If no matter what they say, you just keep walking. No matter how hot it is, you keep walking. I know you're going to get thirsty out there as you walk. The dust is going to pile up because there's a lot of you walking. There's going to be a lot of things that you're going to face. You're going to face the overflowing Jericho. You're going to face a major walled city, but I've already given it to you. Just believe. Just walk it out. Just walk through it. <laughs> oh, that's a word for somebody today. Just walk it out. Just walk through it. I know you've been facing a stronghold. I don't know what that stronghold is today. I don't know if it's sadness. Maybe you went through the loss of somebody close to you in your life, a loved one, a spouse, a child, a friend. Maybe maybe you've dealt with some financial problems with all the economy going the way it is. Maybe the Lord gave you a vision or a dream and, and it hasn't come to pass yet and you feel like it never will. But oh, beloved, I've been sent today to tell you to walk it out. That stronghold, hallelujah. Woo, I got to clap my hands on that one. That stronghold is about to be, a hallelujah, tore down. God has already given it to you. Now, if God's made you a promise, hold on to that promise. Don't give up to it. Be like Abraham. The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God. And you got to understand something was key. When God changed Abram's name to Abraham, the name Abraham meant father of many nations. So that meant when he didn't have any children and it was just him and Sarah and he, they would say, what is your name? And he'd say, my name is Abraham. People would look at him and probably look around and say, well, how many kids you have? Because he was saying, I'm the father of many nations. At that time, he wasn't even the father of one nation. He wasn't even the father of half a nation. But he would say, my, my name is Abraham. He was walking it out. He made sure he told everybody, don't call me Abram anymore because my name just doesn't mean a single thing. It means a multiple of things. I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many blessings. When Abraham went out and God said, look up to the stars, uh, Abraham, you see all those stars? Your descendants will be more than the stars of heaven. God was saying, Abraham, I need you to understand something that you can't count the stars and you won't be able to count your descendants. You won't be able to count the nations I'm going to bring out of you. You won't be able to count those, but I need you to see it today. And though it says he did not foresee it, that he staggered not at that promise. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you are about to step over your Jordan. You're about to step in the promised land you've been waiting for. Some of you have been waiting a week or two weeks, a month, a year, many years, or some maybe a decade. But that word that God spoke to your heart and through a minister or through a dream or through the spirit, it's going to happen. Beloved of God, I don't care what your stronghold looks like today. God said to Joshua, be strong, be courageous. I have given you Jericho. I have given you the mighty men. I have given you the king. I have given you the city, everything in it. All I need you to do is walk it out. Oh, beloved, that's all God's looking for is somebody who will walk it out. Somebody 
who will stand strong. Somebody who will say, God, I'm going to do what you told me to do. It may not feel good. <laughs> my feet may be tired. My back may be tired. My eyes may be tired. I may be choking, choking on the dust. God, I need a drink of water. But God, I'm going to walk it out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's what I want you to prepare your heart and mind to do, beloved. I want you to prepare your heart and mind to walk it out. I don't know what kind of stronghold you're, you're, you're facing today, but before this series is over, I know you're going to walk it out. And I know, hallelujah, by the time you hit that seventh day, you're going to see your victory. We're going to get more into the stronghold of Jericho later on. We're going to get more into the thickness of that wall and, and the obstacles they faced mentally seeing what was behind that wall. You know, they had to have looked and thought, okay, if it's this big on the outside, what is it on the inside? They estimated it covered about 12 to 14 acres that these people were walking around. And, and no, no telling how big it was inside with all the, the, the houses built onto the walls, plus all the people that have uh, houses inside, plus the king's palace, plus are the armor armory and all the weapons keeping. And, but beloved of God, they had to get beyond the visualization in their mind and see the victory in their life and see it in their spirit. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you joined us today. No matter what type of media you're watching or listening to us on, we're, we're excited. We want you to become a part of New Life 313 Ministries. Join us. Go to newlife313.life. That's newlife313.life. And, and connect with us. You can watch our live videos there. You can tune into our live revival services. You can get our programming schedule there. Also, you can see our archives. You can hear some good singing and download some good teaching and also sign up to become part of the e-letter ministry where we send out an e-letter every single week. We Sometimes we might contact you twice a week, but we don't inundate you every day. It's just a word of encouragement. Plus, you can see where we're going to be if we're going to be in your area. We're so glad that you were with us today. And once again, to all of our monthly hero partners who sow into this ministry every single month, thank you for being a part of New Life 313 Hero Partners. You are the ones that are helping us fight back the enemies that are attacking the moral courage and strength of God's people and trying to corrupt our children. Our ministry is a ministry that is rapidly expanding. Right now, we are in a $5 million expansion phase in our ministry. If you'd like to find out more about that and be a part of the ministry center, contact us. Go to newlife313.life. Everything's there that you need to know how to write us, how to phone us, how to email us, how to contact us through the website. We want to be a part of your life on a daily basis. It's been a pleasure. Let me pray for you today. And I want to say, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, just pray this simple prayer. Would you just simply pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you asking Lord for your forgiveness. Take sin out of my life. Put salvation in. Take hatred out of my heart and put love in and give me peace and assurance in Jesus' name. Friend, we love you and appreciate you so much. And we're so glad that you were a part of what God is doing here at New Life 313 Ministries through our Life of Excellence Media Outreach Ministry. We love you and appreciate you. And remember this, this is Jay Hurt, Senior Lead Minister of New Life 313 Ministries, telling you, we are, because of you, rebuilding lives, restoring hope, renewing vision, and you have purpose. God bless.